I'm Johnny. Sorry about the last few weeks. Shit got a little crazy. Say la vie. And it's time for modularity. If you haven't watched my video about what makes the TB303 the TB303, you should go check it out now. It's probably one of my best works to date, and it's got a lot of really useful information in that video for this video. Because we're gonna talk about modular synthesizers, what they mean, and what I think the future of modular synthesis is in a post-digital world. Now, if you're into synths at all, and you haven't watched the documentary, A Dream of Wires, you should probably pause this video, go check it out right now. It's on Netflix, it's super awesome. It's narrated by one of Canada's icons, Patty Schmidt. So real quick, let's just go over what a modular synth is. Unlike say, one of these things here, a modular synth is a giant box full of components and plugs. You take a whole bunch of patch cords and you plug one end of the synth into the other and kind of hope that if you chain all the pieces together, it makes sound. In the 303 video, what I'm talking about, the VCO and the VCF and the envelope and the VCA and how they all wire together, with a modular synth, it's up to you to wire them together. Now this has some amazing creative potential here because you can do a lot. The creative freedom with a modular synth is practically unbounded, which is both its curse and its blessing. There's more than a few guys that have fallen down the modular synth rabbit hole, ended up not making music, but instead just making sound. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, actually. If that's a hole you want to fall into, then by all means, jump down that hole. But if your goal is to make music, then trying to figure out why the control voltage isn't outputting exactly what you want can be quite removed from the end goal of making a kick drum that goes Now, truth be told, I've never actually touched a modular. I've seen one in the flesh, but I've never had the experience of patching together all these different chords. I've built a synth. I've designed a mini synth and built it, but I've never actually done a full on modular. They're really expensive. I have played with a plugin called Bezio, but since I'm here talking about plugins, there is a difference between having a box and a box of wires beside you and plugging everything in and twiddling all the knobs and clicking a mouse on some virtual wires on screen. That's where a plugin like Bazil, where it pretends to be a modular synthesizer inside of a computer, falls down flat. It's kind of everything horrible about a modular synth with none of the good parts. The immediacy of any synth but especially a modular is something to behold when that modular synth is on the screen in front of you you're one level of abstraction away probably my biggest beef with it is that as part of the whole plug-in architecture it doesn't fit with ableton live particularly well i can't easily run the output of the oscillator into some other ableton plugin and then back into bazil so that's where I'm gonna talk about the next thing called Ocelot. And this is where I see the future of modular synthesis inside computers going. Ocelot is this thing that I've only briefly scratched at. It's a series of Max for Live plugins. So what that essentially means is that it integrates with the rest of Ableton Live a lot better. The reason why to me it feels like the future of synthesis at least in the in the box digital realm, it's easy for somebody to turn around and make their own modules, right? They have a development kit for Ocelot that you can just go ahead and use and use with Max for Live, which is their own development environment. It basically gives the tools to the people to make their own additions to the modular synth. You're not buying this prefab unit that you connect a bunch of wires to. No, no, you get to get deep into the box. 
I almost want to say that for a system to be truly modular, you should be able to do that. You should be able to get into the box. Like true modularity isn't so much that you can patch disparate pieces from left to right. True modularity means, okay, this component may be a black box, but I understand its inputs and outputs. And because I understand its inputs and outputs, I can then extend and make this black box make some serious brown notes. So is Ocelot the future? Not necessarily. This is not an ad for the thing. I mean, like I said, I only was able to scratch the surface of it. It looks neat. I'm considering throwing down the 99 bones to get it, but this really feels like just the starting point. I kind of feel like there's room for the next soft Bob Moog to come in and show, hey, digital synthesis is kind of cool and in the box digital synthesis can be really cool once we stop just trying to emulate these hardware boxes. I mean, the character of a TB303 is not because it emulates a bass guitar well. Not at all. In fact, it's the reasons in which it fails to emulate a bass guitar spectacularly where the TB303 shines on its own. Likewise, with software modularity, really excellent software modular synths should be able to use the strengths of the computer, strengths of the screen, and strengths of the keyboard and mouse rather than having those as a weakness. All right, I apologize for missing the last couple of weeks. And until next time, kids, modularity is fun.